Pokemon being a Nintendo exclusive since forever, Steam and more overall PC gaming never really had any monster collector JRPG hybrid in the same vein as Pokemon. That is until recently with the rise of indie developers we're finally getting what some could call Pokemon's like on PC. And in this video I'll be giving you those that are in my opinion the 10 best of them. The goal here is to provide you with games that you will like if you're into Pokemon. So they need to share some similarities. For example I didn't include Shin Megami Tensei 3 to this list because outside of capturing monsters it is completely different from Pokemon. But feel free to check it out if you like dark atmosphere and demons. It is a good game. It is also not a ranking so the order doesn't matter at all. Let's start with the number 10. Koromon is a game very similar to Pokemon in its graphics and the way the game is built, but that also changed a few things. First of all, there is a system of stamina instead of the power point. Power points were never the greatest thing that Pokemon created and Koromon fixed that. Koromon is also a much harder game than Pokemon, it adds features such as a randomizer and Nuzlocke natively, and also changed the shiny system to make it better. Overall, the design of the game is pretty, but if you're used to the 600 creatures of the Pokemon license, you'll obviously be a bit disappointed on that part since it's around 100 creatures that you'll be able to capture, breed and evolve here. If you are into Pokemon, this one should be a safe bet. Number 9. Next game is called Monster Sanctuary, and we could simply say that it is Pokemon meets Metroidvania. Here, your creatures will help you face the different obstacles facing you, and will also be fighting for you. It is quite different game from the Pokemon formula, but I believe it is a game worth mentioning if you're into Pokemon and maybe Metroid. But in my opinion, being a fan of Pokemon should be enough. Each fight in this game will be 3 vs 3, which make the composition of your team more important than ever. The game also features some interesting features, such as Nuzlocke and Randomizer, that people enjoying Pokemon tend to like. It is overall a good choice of game, but less basic than Koromon. Number 8. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Isn't a game that is the most similar to Pokemon on this list, but it definitely need a spot here. The best thing about this game is probably the way the Digimon works. Each Digimon have 6 different stages of evolution and can evolve and devolve as many times as you want. They also have multiple possibilities, which make it possible to transform into almost anything, but the catch is that the game is very grindy and that is definitely core to the Digimon license. Another thing that people might dislike is that sometimes the game is heavy on dialogues and it's not always very interesting. The current version available on Steam offered the two games and the possibility to transfer your Digimon from one another. The amount of content available is huge, but you gotta love grinding. Number 7. Next is Temtem. It is a game that takes a lot from Pokemon, but also changed the power point system into a stamina system and make the story more interesting by making it harder. The game featured turn-based battles that always are 2 vs 2 that make the game more interesting. It also features shinies and nowadays even chroma, which is an even rarer version of shiny but with perfect stats. It is a MMORPG, so it comes with some downsides. It also offers microtransactions, which I do not think are useful, but that are there. It also has one big advantage, and that is to play the entire story in co-op with a friend, which is the best part of the game. I strongly suggest it for that reason. Number 6. Since we'll talk about Pokemon Meet Metroid, we'll talk about Pokemon Meet 2D Zelda, now with Cassette Beasts. Cassette Beasts, like Temtem, is a game that focus on 2v2 fights. For that, you'll always have with you one of the 5 partners available with you. They all have their own creature and you can change it whenever you want. There is also a system of friendship that will increase as you pass time with that ally and increase your bonds. In Cassette Beasts, you'll be the one transforming into a creature and not summoning one. This system will also allow you to fusion with your partner once you increase your friendship with them. There is a staggering amount of fusion possible in this game, but most of the time very little change from one another. It is overall a good game, but while the fights are turn-based, you should expect to like open world exploration to fully enjoy that one too. Oh, and the OST is great, by the way. Number 5. Anode Heart 
is a game that mixes Digimon World and Pokemon together to try to make something new and interesting. For those of you that do not know Digimon World, basically your goal is to recruit the lost citizen of the city and also to take care of your Digimon. Well, here all the things about taking care of your Digimon are gone and the fights are now turn-based instead of cheering for your Digimon to beat up the other one. The game also features a card game that could remind you of Digimon World 3. Basically good stuff and it isn't very well known game. So you should take a look. Maybe you'll find a gem there. Number 4. Spin off from a massive license, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin isn't a Monster Hunter with the usual gameplay, but a turn based RPG with monster collecting element. Hence, why is it there? It is overall a good game that did receive a lot of content as DLCs, but that apparently have a bug that permanently corrupt your save and lock you from being able to play in the multiplayer mode, which would be lame. Overall, this game is probably the biggest license here and it is well rated. It is definitely the closest you'll get from a AAA Pokemon like. You probably can go blindly. And if not, there is a demo available for you to try. Number 3. Since Monster Hunter did it, why not Final Fantasy? We'll be talking about World of Final Fantasy, a monster collector game from the Final Fantasy IP. Not so much a Pokemon-like, but I felt that its cute graphics still allowed to be added here. A World of Final Fantasy is a game that mixes turn-based combat and creatures collecting with a lot of fan service for Final Fantasy fans. And as Final Fantasy is huge, I believe some of you at least know about it. This is definitely not a AAA game, and more like I said, a game for the fans of Final Fantasy that happen to be into creature collecting. Number 2. Moonstone Island is once again a blend of two genres. Pokemon and Stardew Valley to be precise. And for once, it is not played with turn-based combat, but with a system of cards. This game seemed to take a lot from Stardew Valley, and in case you're not familiar with that game, it is a farming sim that lets you take care of your farm to sell the crops and purchase stuff in the village, to grow more wealthy or whatever you want. It is very similar to Harvest Moon if it ring a bell. In short, you live the farmer's life and depending on the day you do different stuff, and since it is a mix of that and Pokemon, you'll also be able to explore and raise creatures to fight for you. The game is apparently very well rated, but struggle with the problem of everything being too expensive and overall a lot of grind. Number 1. Nexomon is a game, or should I say license, as next year the third game of this series will release. So it is a game that is basically very similar to Pokemon and that played safe with the changes mostly. It is also probably the game of this list with the biggest roster available as it's around 300 creatures. The design are in my opinion great, I honestly like a lot the art style of this game. And if you really want Pokemon on PC, this is probably the closest you'll find outside of emulators. Before I go, I have last game to talk about. We'll call it the number 11. If you're a big fan of early Pokemon games, this creature could maybe appeal to you, as it's taking a graphical style very similar to what Pokemon Red and Blue used to be. However, while the graphical style is the same as the old Pokemon, the fights are 3 vs 3, without any possibility to swap and are a fair bit different than what you could be used to. The game offered no breeding, but instead some kind of fusion system. It is well rated, and overall, I think those games taking inspiration from the Game Boy Color's graphics are quite pretty. That's it for today, folks. There is one game that could have fitted this list that I didn't talk about, and it is Monster Crown, as it has the lowest rated reviews of them all due to some bugs, but that game have a sequel in development, so feel free to check it out if you want another Pokemon like to play. Thank you for watching, have a good day and take care folks. See you in the next video.